Alright guys, I've got some great ideas for some new projects. But to make these new projects, I'm going to need a decent table saw. Now this is the table saw that I've been using for the last 17 or 18 years. I bought it for about 25 quid in Aldi in the UK. And to be honest, I didn't think it was going to last me this long. But fair play, it's done really well. Unfortunately, the blade, it's fixed height. And what I want is I want to be able to adjust the height of the blade so that I can get different depths of cut. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to make a table saw out of one of my circular saws. So let's get making. Now before we start, let's have a look at the donor saw. I said donor saw. Who edits these videos? Let's have a look what I'm going to be using. I'm going to use this. It's an Evolution Fury. And the good thing about these uh, circular saws is that the blade that comes with them allows you to cut through metal as well as wood. So if you've got an old pallet with some nails in, it's no problem for one of these. It just cuts straight through both at the same time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself this table saw but because I've got no space left in my garage because I've made that many other projects I'm going to have to incorporate my new table saw into my workbench and hopefully I'll be able to make it so that I can adjust the height of the cut as well as the angle of the cut never done it before don't know how it's going to turn out let's just hope it's good enough to show you guys now the first thing I'm going to do is I've got to make myself a drawing because something like this, I can't just guess it as I go along and change as I go along. I've got, to have, I've got to have a decent drawing. But one thing about having a decent drawing is I've got to know where to start. So I'm going to dismantle this now, take some measurements off it, then I can go make my drawing, and then I can come back and start making all the bits. Let's get on with it. I don't forget it's only marked on this which direction it's going in so mark it on the inside otherwise I'll forget now that I've taken it all to pieces I think it's going to be a bit easier than what I first expected. This pivot, which used to raise and lower the depth of the blade, I'm going to reuse the bracket from here. I'm just going to take that off, weld the piece on, and then I've got to come up with a mechanism. I'm going to have to do that on, on the drawing, because I, if I just start making it, I just keep getting it wrong. I've got to do it on the drawing, make sure it works before I start making it. Just drawn these two lines 30 millimeters I've marked a little cross from the center of the hole so by measuring 30 millimeters and 30 millimeters I'll be able to find the exact center of this hole so I can take this piece inside the house for me drawing and then 
I measured the centre of this hole to the centre of this hole and it's exactly 115 millimetres. Right, I've just finished my drawing and basically what it is, I've got to make a box that the saw sits in. I'm going to use the original pivot point from the saw and I'm making a, a raise and lower mechanism for the saw blade. When I wind it down, the saw blade will be below the surface and when I wind it up, it'll be at its maximum height. The whole box has to pivot and the pivot point has to be exactly in the centre of the blade on line with the top surface of the table. And that way, when the blade turns, it'll only cut a very small slot into the top of the table. Imagine this is the saw blade and the pivot point is exactly on the top of the table. Then you only need a tiny, tiny slot for the blade to pivot through. Whereas if the pivot point was lower down, you'd need a massive <laughs> slot and then any wood that you try to cut could fall through the hole. So that's why I've got to make trunnions. Trunnions allow the pivot point to be exactly at the center of the blade on line with the top surface of the table. So now I'm going to do a bit of this. And I'm going to do some of that. And once I've done that, I get to use my new welder. It's an S Multi 525H from Stamos. Fully variable amps up to 180 and you can use it as a stick welder, a plasma cutter or a TIG welder. Today I'm going to use it as a TIG welder so I bought myself some argon gas and here I am using it for the first time on a project. Tack welding with this machine is so much easier and so much neater, it's unbelievable. And because it's got variable amps and an automatic start, it means I can do a neater weld in some tighter spaces. Now I've only been using this welder for about 10 minutes, but I can already see a vast improvement over my previous welder. I even managed to turn the amps down and weld two plates to an elongated nut for the raise and lower mechanism in the saw that I'm making. I've said it in previous videos that I'm no welder and I know that there's still room for improvement but look at this compared to my previous welder. 100% better. Now all I have to do is some tapping. What I've just done is temporarily clamped this hinge point onto the wood and that allowed me to find the position I can just do it again that allowed me to find the position for where to drill for the the raise and lower push pull mechanism 
And now what I've got to do is get my pillar drill and drill a few holes. Now that I've got the hinge mechanism fixed in position, I've countersunk all the heads because the trunnions are going to fit on this piece. Uh, the bearings are in position. So now what I've got to do is I've got to make two sides. And once I've made the two sides, I can clamp it all in position and check that this uh, raise and lower mechanism actually works with no adjustments. And if it works, then I can screw it all together and and then I've only got to make um, a little uh, handle to a little winding handle for the raise and lower mechanism. Is it cold in here or is it just me? What do you reckon Bernie? I was just sitting there trying to keep warm, trying to pay attention to what was going on. Oh I do like them mittens. I'm off to get some. the box it's only held together with clamps at the moment and obviously the front's missing I've got the front piece I've made a cutout in the front piece so I've got access to release this bolt and change the blade if I need be in the future um, I'm going to show you how it works just before I, I put all the screws in I still haven't made the handle yet I'm using my cordless drill for that at the moment but just to show you the mechanism. That's lovely and smooth. And at the moment it's a bit rickety like I said it's only got clamps on but I'll be putting I'll be putting the screws in uh, tomorrow I'll be making the handle tomorrow and if you come back and watch the next video I'll be fitting it underneath my bench and finishing it all off so thanks for watching guys catch you next time <laughs>